I believe that women are the love in the world and deserve to have committed love from a man in their life because it's the way men are best. Men are best in committed, bonded, monogamous relationships. They really are. And I believe, and I come from this vantage point, that it is because men desire so much to provide for women and that gives them a purpose and men are all about purpose and what I mean by that is that they're all about achievement and purpose whether it's their advocation their vocation or their relationships it provides meaning in their life and it's what just intrinsically a male is all about you know I say that men are about three things three C's of men they're about challenge competition and conquering and we women at our core are about connection cooperation and caretaking and when our three C's meet their three C's together as a couple we make it happen we make it happen for ourselves we certainly make it happen for the man and we make it happen for a family whether it's an extended family or the children that come from our union together so where does that fall into the selfie thing that I'm talking about? And um, on episode 18, I talked about uh, a bit of an article. And this I pulled up more because of the confusion I told you I discovered uh, when I was looking through um, you know, some comments about episode 18. And I realized the deeper dive had to happen because of that confusion. And for example, the confusion of the fact that I maintain that a man has to see you in a light for marriage. You know that I go by Freud's Madonna whore complex. Um, strong wording he used because it's a strong concept and it is in the deepest uh, reptilian brain of males that men immediately categorize a woman to be in the category of wife and possible mother or woman only to have fun with and it is, I think, truly, what is the most difficult thing for women to grasp because it seems so, it's so out of our realm and it seems so antiquated and like how can men still feel this way given all that we've become as a society and I think it's two things two factors it takes a long 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 time I mean probably thousands or even a million years for any kind of deep change like that to take place in a mammal in terms of our deepest feelings so for example we women bond through time and sex even though we have become in our society you can do in our society pretty much anything you'd like to do sexually it's kind of up to you and if you want to uh, have sex um, with any man and you want to play around and uh, you're not hurting anyone else um, society says you know to each his own and 
when women do that, they're kind of going against their most basic um, core reptilian brain, so to speak, an inner core, because if a woman sees a man, likes him, spends time, and has sex, and continues to do so, she will bond to him and even start to fall in love with him, even when he's completely wrong for her or not a good guy or whatever. We see this play out in our society all the time. Now, with everything, there are always exceptions to the rule. But when I talk here, uh, you know, talking about my stuff or talking to someone, I'm always going within the realm of what is considered the norm or usual. So that's what I'm talking about. That most women, I would say, you know, a, a vast, vast majority, that's what it is. And yes, exceptions, but I always say, think of yourself as an exceptional woman, but not the exception to the rule. And so, if you want the best chance of getting a committed relationship and to be in marriage, which I'm not coming for, at marriage from a moral stance in any way, shape, or form. It's just that men, in order to bond, because they do not bond through time and sex at all, they only bond in one way. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Bob Grant. Um, I believe he's a, a counselor, certainly, um, certainly a counselor, but a, likely a licensed counselor. I think he practices in one of the Carolinas, North or South Carolina. But I, I learned this from him. I don't know how I found his stuff, but I did. And he says that men only bond in one way. And that is through making a formal commitment. And if you read my book, you will understand from a perspective that we relate to as women, that's the puppy principle, how that bonding occurs and why it's so important for men. A, so that they don't run amok in society. <laughs> and B, that they're the best in, in a bonded relationship, and they actually are so desirous of it. They really are. Good men are absolutely desirous of finding that one woman that they can bond to and that provides them a personal purpose through providing, protecting, and possibly procreating the three Ps of men. Want more information on anything you've heard discussed here today? Why won't he commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One is available at all major book retailers. Or grab an autographed copy of Coach Paula's groundbreaking bestseller at whywon'thecommit.com. How does this all relate to what we're doing now with our selfie culture? Because going back to Freud, from the moment a man even sees our picture or pictures, he is getting an immediate spark-like response in his brain. And those selfies that are self-aggrandizing, it's so interesting. I, I pulled up this article um, it is called The Effect of the Selfie on Society and the Individual. And it's from UK Essays, Providers of Free Study Resources. So I really I like this um, site. And they wrote this article recently. I think it's um, probably, tw uh, yeah, 2018, just a year ago, June of 2018, that they present their statistic of 61.6% of selfies came from women, while 36.7 came from men. 
and that now there are 80 million photographs in Instagram alone that fall under quote-unquote hashtag selfie. That's according to Lev Manovich, a professor at the Graduate Center. So, given that, women are doing it a lot more than men. Very interesting, right? And it is not the fact that a woman is taking a selfie that is an issue. And here's the deeper dive. It is the message that's coming across to the man that's viewing it. And if that message is, look at me, look at my body, that's when the man in that spark that happens in his brain immediately puts you in the second category of Freud's Madonna whore complex that all men in all cultures have just as much as we women in all cultures bond through time and sex. It is something within us that we cannot deny. And when we do, when we're in a denial and go against this, it tends to hurt us. So, when a selfie is done in a self-aggrandizing, look at me, look at my body way, and the man immediately puts you in that category, the second one, which is woman to have fun with, not woman to marry, it can be an issue for you as a woman. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it should be that way. I wish it was not that way. Because women are so much more than this linear black and white way men have of categorizing us. We are so much more. Because we can be that faithful, monogamous, and incredibly sexy woman. Absolutely we can. Mother, sexy, monogamous, good wife, faithful, all of these things we can be together because we are complex and we can absolutely be that. But the, the world, unfortunately, doesn't really work that way and certainly the mind of males don't. And that's the problem. Because the man categorizes us in that split second, nanosecond, immediately even from looking at a picture. And why is this? We dive even deeper why this is. I believe at the core, men are most afraid of being cheated on by anyone that they've made a decision to commit to. Cheated on regardless is, is a big thing for, for both sexes. But for men, it goes to their deepest core of who they are and are they good enough. And I believe if you take it down to its absolute reptilian level, it makes a lot of sense. And here's, uh, here's why I believe. Like, if we take um, in the wild, uh, lions, for example, one male lion in the pride is the king of the pride, right? And they uh, actually, male lions, they fight each other to uh, procreate with the quote-unquote best female. And we're mammals, and we actually men do the same thing. When we were in, just out of our caves, you know, uh, when we were millions of years ago, um, I read about this, it might have been Desmond Morris, I love his stuff. 
uh, he uh, wrote a wonderful book, The Human Animal. And it might be in that book, but I may have read it somewhere else, that the reason uh, premature ejaculation was so uh, prolific for the longest time because when we were in the wild, we had to copulate very, very quickly in order to not be caught by other human marauders who might hurt us, kill us, and certainly wild animals. Cause think about it. Think about if we just lived in the wild. And I'm not talking about uh, now when we have our fancy tents and all that. I mean really living in the wild like wild animals. Men had to make a immediate decision about which woman in whom to plant their seed. And at that time, it was the woman that, on the outside, looked the healthiest and most capable. Just like how do lions, male lions, pick the female in their pride to copulate with and procreate with? I mean, to us, the female lions, they pretty much all look the same. Um, but somehow they know which one, some kind of sense they have, which one will be the most likely to bring that seed to full term and produce their offspring. And men at their core, I mean reptilian brain core, where there's no language, and that was our first we have three brains apparently and that was our first developed brain, the reptilian brain, that there is no language and where we have our fight or flight response and all of the instinctual things that we have inside of us come from that reptilian brain. That men have not evolved beyond that just as much as we have not evolve beyond our reptilian brain, it's always going to be part of us. The male reptilian brain is a part of us. And even in the millions of years that we have been here, we have still not, for lack of a better word, overcome these things. So where selfies come into this is that core caveman-like immediate I mean nanosecond response to a photo, a selfie. And it is so profound because once that mm, reference in that male brain has been made, it is extremely difficult to change that. It's, it's almost impossible to, to change that perception for the man. And it really, really sucks. In the best of all worlds, that should not be. <laughs> that should definitely not be. So somebody brought up, and this was a really good point that I hadn't thought of, and that's why I wanted to do this too. I love when people post what I'm talking about and about the podcast because it allows me to think more deeply and how to really get my message across because that's what's so profound to me. Because I believe so much in what women should have. And in working in my programs, I help women get what it is that they desire and deserve. And that is what's so profound for me. And this podcast is just an outgrowth of that. Yes, in the last seven months, and I work with only a handful of women, the women I work with are just oh, the best, uh, because they want to discover what it is in the relationship they're in that can take it to commitment or they're online dating 
and they want to do it in a way that produces the best possible results. And in the last seven months, with a handful of women, I've been able to help six of those women who didn't think they were going to get that engagement to get that proposal. It's just incredibly fulfilling and profound for me. So for women to understand this deep concept is so important. So the posts that I'm thinking about were, wait a minute, um, let's look at stars who they have incredibly sexy, provocative photos out there. I mean, super provocative. Uh, beautiful photos of them that are even retouched that just would make any man drool, right? Sure. And they get their proposals and they get some good men like it was brought to my attention, Meghan Markle is a great example. And thank you for that post who sent it. That prior to her getting engaged to Harry, she actually has a lot of pictures out there because she was an actress and model. She was on Deal or No Deal. So she has professional pictures out there. And, and one that this gal posted was of her with an extremely low-cut dress and showing off her body. Here is the salient point and the point to take away from this podcast. That those pictures of those models, actresses, pictures that are out there that not the paparazzi took when they're in their sweats and running around or whatever, but these professional these professional photos that are provocative. The difference is that they didn't take the photo and they didn't post it. It was taken for promotional purposes. It was taken by somebody else and it was put out to society, wherever it's posted, by somebody else. That, in itself, is the difference. Okay, so you think, well, why would that make a difference? So, if we look at when a woman is holding up a phone and taking a picture of herself in her very low-cut, provocative dress or outfit or even less, <laughs> just postage stamp kind of things over the body parts that need them. What is it saying in a deeper way to the man? It is saying she doesn't value herself as much as I need my wife to value herself so that if I marry her, I have the least possibility or chance of being cheated on by her and for a challenger to come by and take her. It is that base in the reptilian brain of the man. Okay, so in this article, it's saying that posting selfies is an empowering act because it celebrates normal and average folks. Because heretofore, prior to the internet and really prior to the smartphone, we didn't have this thing in our culture like the selfie. I forget when it was, that word was coined. But it, we didn't have that. And so 
most of the images that we were inundated with heretofore, and I'm going to say like before 2005, 2007 is when the smartphone came in. Apple introduced the smartphone, believe it or not, the first in July of 2007. Wow. What has happened to us in 12 years? But prior to that, we were inundated with images of um, pictures of celebrities and stars and models and so forth. So when a selfie came in, it was aggrandizing normal people, all of us, which is there's something empowering to folks about taking a selfie. And let's face it, most of them that are posted are the ones where you look the cutest, right? Where you're getting across the message you want to be sent out. Again, we come back to that message is not hidden to the mind of the male. That's seeing it. So when it is provocative and sexy, don't get me wrong, he's going to love it. And every consumer in the world is going to post a like about it. Absolutely. The man's going to love it. What I'm talking about here on this podcast and in my work and in my book is about getting the love, real love that you want, vis-a-vis -vis commitment of a man, because that's when they start to love the deepest way possible for them, not a like. Likes aren't going to fill you up. Likes aren't going to create a meaningful and fulfilling life for you, right? For none of us. So according to this Dr. Weber, again, it's very difficult in this article the way they don't um, uh, explain in the text here uh, where these uh, doctors and researchers are from. But according to this Dr. Weber, uh, she says, quote, in my experience, girls, because it's mostly 91% of the Instagram selfies came from teenagers. According to her, she says, in my experience, girls who repeatedly post selfies struggle with low self-esteem. End quote. Overall opinions vary on whether selfie cultural is lame or legitimate, which means it's up to you to shape the future of the habit. Better ask yourself, are my selfies for fun or do I need comments? If you fall under category two, Dr. Rutledge, now that's another doctor and they don't even say where that, where that doctor comes from, recommends shifting your perspective. That could mean cutting selfies out entirely or just scaling back and making them more fun. Everything you share on social media reveals something about you and you are in control, for sure. So it's not just the scaling back, because as I said, if a man sees one image of you touting your beauty in a provocative, sexy way, it makes him make an assessment of you that is not all of you at all. It's one little facet of you. However, he, in his linear black and white brain, puts you in one or one of the categories of the two. And therein lies the problem. When you post it, as opposed to it being taken of you and then posted, is different for your postings, even when you have other friends take your photos, they still cannot be provocative and in a way a look at me, self-aggrandizing way, in terms of sexually, in terms of being sexy. If you want to self-aggrandize about your achievement, the award you won, um, uh, the, the tennis game you won, um, being kind to a, a, an elderly person or an animal or doing something for your mom, those things are fantastic. 
It shows who you are, what you're about. And again, you want to think of what is this showing the world? Is it a look at me? If it's a look at me type of thing, that takes a man's interest down in terms, again, always for me, about commitment and putting in you in the first category. Because sure, you'll get a lot, again, by postings that are uh, wonderful and sexy and pretty and all of that in the second category. And you'll get a million likes from guys. And they will. And they'll want to consume you. But I'm about the commitment, not the consuming. So sometimes, as a woman, it's hard because you feel like if I'm not being seen and all these other women are getting all these likes and action, so to speak, because they are showing their pretty selves and their bodies and posting in a sexual provocative way or a look at me type of way, they're getting more action. But it doesn't matter because that's just that kind of action that, again, weigh it likes or possible committed love. So I hope this deeper dive allows you to truly conceptualize what it means to not be doing the selfie in a way that is showing off. <laughs> and you likely, you didn't necessarily intend it to be that. But when it is connoted from the man's point of view and in an immediate spark-like snap, not even decision because it's not even in his, in his higher brain for decision. It's just to the depths of his core reptilian brain decision where there's no language, he will put you in one of two categories that doesn't set you up for success and commitment, which ultimately is the most fulfilling kind of love you will have. Absolutely. And I believe that women deserve that kind of revering and loving it would be great if we could show all of ourselves in all of our colors, our entire rainbow self. However, we need to know our opponent, so to speak. That's opponent is in quotes, meaning the man. And Freud got this one right. And when we work in a fashion that puts us in that first category, we can't fail. And it gives us the best chance of having what it is that we desire and deserve. So I welcome any other questions about this very... Uh, this matter is very mm, contextual because it doesn't seem to make logical sense from where we are in today's modern society and how we should be seen as the full rainbow of ourselves in, in our full, complex, feminine way. However, we women can know that. We can look at the sexiest provocative picture and know, you know what, at her core, if she finds the man that loves her, she'll be completely committed, completely all in, completely faithful and monogamous. But the man can't do that. If he can, wow, he is one of those eclipses that, hmm, I dare say I need to meet him. So he might not be, he might be somebody from the future, I'd say. <laughs> like a million years hence or a hundred thousand years hence. Uh, he might be from that, coming back from the future. So in the meantime, 
make sure you're making him wonder and doing what is best, whether it's through a selfie or any posting that allows him and makes him wonder. Thank you for listening to Make Him Wonder. If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at MakeHimWonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.